thank you for joining. We are going to be doing today lesson one of the Odyssey. So lesson one of the Odyssey. I love the Odyssey because to me, it symbolizes the end of the school year. So once we get to the Odyssey, I know I start packing up my classroom. I know that that's, you know, the end of the school year. Summer is coming and we're almost there. So very quickly, the first thing we're gonna do today is our extra credit assignment. And so in order to do our extra credit assignment, you need a piece of paper and a pen. Okay, I am going to read a passage and you are going to take notes, but here is, here are the instructions. You're going to take notes without writing words. Yes, I know that's very weird. You are going to take notes without writing words. The only words you are allowed to write, and you want to make sure you follow this, because if I see any words on your picture notes, you won't get the extra credit. The only words that you are allowed to write are the actual names. So if I give you a name, you can write the name. Like a person's name, you can write the name, okay? So once again, thank you for joining me. We are getting started with the Odyssey lesson one. Yay, we're almost there. So first things first, you wanna make sure that you have a piece of paper and a pen. So you need a piece of paper and a pen for this extra credit assignment. And you are going to be taking notes, but you are going to be taking notes without writing words. That's why it's called picture notes. No words. The only words that you are allowed to write are the names. So if I give you somebody's name, you can more or less do the best you can in spelling it. I am really not going to spell the names for you. It doesn't even matter if you spell them right or wrong. That's not the point. The point is I'm going to be telling you a story. You're going to be writing notes using just pictures and symbols. Got it? So write in your chat box, yes, I got it. I understand. I have my piece of paper and I have my pen and I'm ready to go. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm going to read the story slowly to give you time to draw your notes. So you want to make sure that you Draw your notes as I'm reading you the story, okay? According to legends, the chain of events that led to the Trojan War started at a royal wedding. Many gods and goddesses attended the wedding, but Eris, daughter of Zeus and goddess of discord, was not invited because she would inevitably cause trouble. Angry, Eris decided to crash the wedding banquet by throwing down a golden apple inscribed with the words, for the fairest. The goddesses Hera, the queen goddess, Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, and Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, were all in attendance, each one believing that she was the fairest. After bickering a while, they asked Zeus to decide who deserved the apple. Zeus was not about to settle a matter between three goddesses especially these ones. So he did what any god would do. He gave the job to an expendable mortal, Paris. Paris was known for his honesty as his job was to judge cattle. The goddesses each tried to bribe Paris. Hera offered to make him king of Europe and Asia. Athena offered him victory in a battle between Troy and the Greeks. You might want to remember that one. And Aphrodite offered him the most beautiful woman in the world. 
Which one do you guys think that Paris chose? <clears throat> Paris decided to award the apple to Aphrodite. And she sent him to Sparta in Greece to collect his prize. Unfortunately, this woman happened to already be married. Helen, that was her name, was married to Menelaus, king of Sparta and brother of Agamemnon. When Paris arrived, both Helen and Menelaus welcomed, welcomed him with open arms. During one of Menelaus's departures, Paris wooed Helen and the two eloped. Menelaus fumed, so he organized an extraction team to go get her, the entire Greek army. The Trojan War lasted for 10 years, ending with its most famous event, the alleged peace offering of the Trojan horse. The Greeks piled hundreds of men into this elaborate and gigantic wooden horse. When night fell, the Greeks exited the horse, plundered the city, and lit it ablaze. Odysseus, the hero of the Odyssey, authored this plan and also rescued Helen. Upon returning her to Menelaus, he created a story about her retrieval of the famous Greek statue, which demonstrated her loyalty and gave Menelaus good reason to take her back. The Odyssey starts from Odysseus's departure from boat or by boat from Troy with the intention of returning home to his island, Ithaca, in Greece. Okay, did you get your picture notes? I hope you got your picture notes. Now on the back of that paper, I want you to answer the following questions. You want to tell me, number one, you don't have to write the questions, all you have to do is answer them. Zeus passed the buck, and Paris fought with his hormones. What were the results of these decisions? Go ahead and write that on the back of that paper. Number two, how are their decisions relevant or connected to humanity today? You can go ahead and write that on the back of that paper as well. And I just put all the questions in your chat box, just in case you need me to repeat anything. They're all written in your chat. Number three, think of or give school appropriate examples of people who make decisions in high school today with similar motives. Number four, what should we learn and apply from this, from the example of the story? What's the lesson? And number five, what character traits do you already see in Odysseus, even though you haven't even started the story? We have five questions to answer on the back of that page. The front of that page is all your pictures, and the back of that page is the answers to those five questions. Now, what you're going to do is take a picture of both the front and the back, and you're going to upload it to Edsby. And that is your extra credit assignment, okay? Take a picture of your picture notes. Remember, no words, only the names. And the answers to the questions, and you're going to upload those to Edsby. And also remember that all the questions are written for you in the chat box, just in case you're thinking to yourself, well, she went too fast, I couldn't write down those questions, I couldn't answer them in time. They are all written in the chat box, okay? All five of them. So we are going to move on. The next thing we're gonna do is, we have two things going on. We have discussion questions going on, and then we also have, we're going to be reading 
the prologue, Sailing from Troy and Lotus Eaters. It's not very long, but we're going to attempt that. And then also, the last thing is that some people are working on the alternative project. If you're working on your alternative project, you want to make sure that you're watching all these lessons because we will be talking about where Odysseus is and where he's going. So right now, as the story that I just read you indicated, Odysseus is leaving Troy and he's on his way home. He wants to return home. He's been at war for 10 years. He's been at war for 10 years and he is ready to go home, okay? And so this story really is about his return home, his, his journey home. And so the first place on your map or in that checklist, it should be Troy. Okay, that should be your first place. And we're going to start, this is not the entire The Odyssey book. This is, these are excerpts from The Odyssey and The Odyssey was written by Homer and it's translated by Robert Fitzgerald. And the first part is called, it's, this is just a prologue. Sing in me, muse. And through me tell the story of that man skilled in all ways of contending. The wanderer, harried for years on end after he plundered the stronghold on the proud height of Troy. He saw the townlands, and learned the minds of many distant men, and weathered many bitter nights and days in his deep heart at sea, while he fought only to save his life, to bring his shipmates home. But not by will nor valour could he save them. For their own recklessness destroyed them all, children and fools. They killed and feasted on the cattle of Lord Helios the Sun, and he who moves all day through heaven took from their eyes the dawn of their return. Of these adventures, Muse, daughter of Zeus, tell us in our time, lift the great song again. Okay, so in this very first part in the opening verses, Homer, who is the author of the Odyssey, he's kind of breaking that third wall, right? And he is addressing the muse of epic poetry. He's talking to this muse and he's asking for help in telling the story of Odysseus. Like he's asking her for help in telling the story of Odysseus. So the first discussion question will be, who is speaking on page 981? And the next question is, what is going to happen in this epic poem? What is he going to be talking about? And as I just mentioned, he is going to be telling us the story of a man who fought at Troy and is on his way home. The story of Odysseus. The first book that we're reading from is called Sailing from Troy. 10 years after the Trojan War, Odysseus departs from the goddesses Calypso's island. He arrives in Phaeacia, ruled by Asinus. Alcinus offers a ship to Odysseus and asks him to tell of his adventures. And so Odysseus is talking to Alcinus and he's telling him of his adventures. So this is Odysseus actually talking. I am Laertes' son, Odysseus. Men hold me formidable for guile in peace and war. This fame has gone abroad to the sky's rim. My home is on the peaked sea mark of Ithaca, under Mount Nyon's wind-blown robe of leaves, in sight of other islands, Dulichion, Sami, wooded Zakynthos, Ithaca being most lofty in that coastal sea, and northwest, while the rest lie east and south. A rocky isle, but good for a boy's training. I shall not see on earth a place more dear, though I have been detained long by Calypso, loveliest among goddesses, who held me in her smooth caves to be her heart's delight as Circe of Ea, the enchantress, desired me and detained me in her hall. But in my heart I never gave consent. Where shall a man find sweetness to surpass his own home and his parents? In far lands he shall not, though he find a house of gold. What of my sailing then from Troy? What of those years of rough adventure weathered under Zeus? The wind that carried west from Ilion brought me to Ismeros on the far shore, a strong point on the coast of the Sicones. I stormed that place and killed the men who fought. Plunder we took, and we enslaved the women to make division equal shares to all. 
but on the spot I told them back and quickly out to sea again. My men were mutinous, fools on stores of wine. Sheep after sheep they butchered by the surf, and shambling cattle feasting, while fugitives went inland, running to call to arms the main force of Sicones. This was an army trained to fight on horseback, or where the ground required on foot. They came, with dawn over that terrain like the leaves and blades of spring. So doom appeared to us. Dark word of Zeus for us, our evil days. My men stood up and made a fight of it, backed on the ships with lances kept in play, from bright morning through the blaze of noon holding our beach, although so far outnumbered. But when the sun passed toward unyoking time, then the Achaeans one by one gave way. Six benches were left empty in every ship that evening when we pulled away from death. And this new grief we bore with us to sea. Our precious lives we had, but not our friends. No ship made sail next day until some shipmate had raised a cry three times for each poor ghost unfleshed by the Sicones on that field. Okay, so Odysseus is telling the story of the people he could not save, and he's talking about his men. He cannot save his men. And so the, that's the first question, who can Odysseus not save? The second question is, what impression of Odysseus do you get from the introduction of the story? Like, what is it that you feel about Odysseus just on him telling the story? He sounds kind of boastful, maybe determined to get home, right? Um, he's definitely confident. Who rules Phaeacia is the next question, right? And what does he give Odysseus? And at the very beginning, I did tell you it was Asinus, right? The king of Phaeacia. And he gives a boat in return for telling the story. So he gives Odysseus a boat because Odysseus is telling him the story. Who is going to tell the story going forward? Who is telling the story right now? It's not Homer, it's Odysseus. And if it's Odysseus and it happened to Odysseus, in what point of view is it being told in? It's in first person point of view. Where is Odysseus's home? <clears throat> and we already said that that was in Ithaca. What women or goddesses detained Odysseus? He talks about this and he says that he was detained, but he was not there he never gave consent right and it was calypso and circe what land did odysseus and his men pillage and they pillage the sicones in ismaris right and he says that all in this particular passage what happened while they were pillaging instead of leaving for home and more troops came in, six benches of men were killed. So Odysseus lost a lot of men at that particular place, right? He could not kind of control them. Um, it seems like he does not have strong control over his men. He wanted them to leave, but they stay pillaging. So perhaps he's not as good of a leader as he thinks he is, you know, in his head. Maybe he's He's a better leader than what he actually is. This next passage is called the Lotus Eaters. And there's a few questions here. We're gonna talk about those as well. Now Zeus, the Lord of Cloud, roused in the north a storm against the ships and driving veils of squall moved down like night on land and sea. And so the very first question is, who caused the storm? And he says, now Zeus, the Lord of Cloud, roused in the north a storm, right? So it was Zeus who caused the storm. And where were they pushed by, by the storm? Where did the storm push them is the next question. So let's listen. The bows went plunging at the gust. Sails cracked and lashed out strips in the big wind. We saw death in that fury dropped the yards, unshipped the oars, and pulled for the nearest lee. Then two long days and nights we lay offshore, worn out and sick at heart, tasting our grief, until a third dawn came with ringlets shining. Then we put up our masts, hauled sail, and rested, letting the steersman and the breeze take over. 
I might have made it safely home that time. But as I came round Malia, the current took me out to sea, and from the north a fresh gale drove me on past Cythera. Nine days I drifted on the teeming sea before dangerous high winds. Upon the tenth, we came to the coastline of the lotus eaters, who live upon that flower. And where did they push? Where were they pushed by, by the storm? And it is to the lands of the lotus eaters. And now the next question is, who went to see what was on shore? So who does Odysseus send to go see what was on shore? We landed there to take on water. All ship's companies mustered alongside for the midday meal. Then I sent out two picked men and a runner to learn what race of men. And there's your answer right there. He sent out two picked men and a runner, right? Those are the people he sends out to go check out the land of the Lotus Eaters. He has no idea what's on shore there. And that land sustained. They fell in soon enough with Lotus Eaters, who showed no will to do us harm, only offering the sweet Lotus to our friends. So what do the Lotus Eaters do to these men who get there? And it's nothing harmful. They don't hurt the men. They just give them some sweet Lotus flowers to eat, basically. They're like, oh, eat these flowers. And we don't know what the result of eating the flowers are, but that's our next question. What's the result of eating the lotus? What do these lotus do? But those who ate this honeyed plant, the lotus, never cared to report, nor to return. They longed to stay forever, browsing on that native bloom, forgetful of their homeland. I drove them, all three wailing. So eating this plant gives them some sort of like amnesia. It doesn't, it makes them not want to go home. They become like they don't care whether they go home or not. And the next question is how did the men get off the island finally? So what does Odysseus have to do in order to get these men off of the island? Into the ships, tied them down under their rowing benches and called the rest. All hands aboard, come clear the beach and no one taste the lotus or you lose your hope of home. Filing into their places by the rollocks, my oarsmen dipped their long oars in the surf, and we moved out again on our seafaring. And so he says that he had to get the men off of the island by tying them up, right, to their rowing benches so that they could all sail away. The other ones they told, don't, go, don't eat the lotus, because if you eat the lotus, you won't want to go home. Okay, so that is the introduction, Sailing from Troy and the Lotus Eaters, and all our discussion questions. As you may have noticed, Odysseus was in a few places today. So if you are working on your project, which is a postal board, you have to do a couple of things. You have to, or a few things, not a couple, a few things. The first thing you have to do is trace Odysseus's route from Troy to Ithaca. Remember, he's on his way home to Ithaca, right? He just about finished fighting this 10-year war, and he's dying to get home to his wife and his son. And so this particular Ithaca, it covers the areas of what are modern day to us. It would be Turkey, Greece, Italy, and like the Mediterranean Sea. That's the map that you will be looking at. So these are our modern day places. But today we know that he left Troy, right? That's the number one place. And then he went to his Maris. And you can see that if you look at your text on page 983. And then he went round Malia, right? And you can see that on page 984 if you look at your text. Then he went past Cythera, right? And again, you can see that on page 984 that he went past Cythera. And then he went to the land of the Lotus Eaters, right? That's the route so far. So we've got Troy, we've got Ismaris, 983, Round Melia, 984, past Cythera, 984 as well, and to the land of the Lotus Eaters. So if you're following along with your check marks, with the, that checkbox that I gave you in your Etsy, make sure that you write the page numbers. Because the other thing that you have to do is, well, one thing is draw a symbol for each of the obstacles he encountered. Like for instance, he just encountered an obstacle in the land of the Lotus Eaters. So what's a good symbol for the land of the Lotus Eaters? And it's probably like a lotus flower or something would be a good symbol. You're going to trace his route on the map. You're going to label 
each place and you're going to provide a quote for each place. So that's why these page numbers that I'm giving you are so important so that you could go back into the text and provide a quote. Now behind me, I have a, um, a version of, or a project that a student completed and you probably can see, maybe you can, let me move to the side here. You'll notice that this particular student, you see all the quotes for each one of the locations, and then you see the map, and you can see this is the modern day Italy, Greece, Turkey, Sardinia, Sicily, Tunisia, those are the modern day places. And then this particular student labeled the map, and you can see arrows going from place to place in the map. And that's kind of what you wanna do. Next time we meet, I'll show you another example of another student project as well, so that you can kind of know what you're working on. Now, we are done for today, so if you have any questions, you could reach out to me on Esby. I'm not gonna be available for the next couple of hours as I'm actually going to be headed to school to clean up my classroom, but I will be on Esby this afternoon, and I hope to talk to some of you then, okay? And I will be posting this video on Edsby. Make sure that you get your extra credit uploaded. If you didn't sign in, unfortunately, for the extra credit at the very beginning of the class, I'm not going to repeat that entire lesson. You will have to wait until I get the video uploaded to Edsby. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. And I will actually see you guys tomorrow. We're going to be reading um, the Cyclops tomorrow, lesson two at 10 a.m. So I hope to see some of you then. All right, guys. Bye. Have a great day.